Hello everyone, this is going to be my review on Lies of P. And uh, unlike my other reviews I've done on this channel where I have like an actual script and stuff where I read that, uh, this time I'm actually just going to look over at my document I have of pros and cons and just talk about each and then give like an overall score at the end while just randomly playing in the background. So. First things first, the storytelling and the story overall I thought was superb. I really enjoyed it. And it's coming from somebody who really doesn't invest heavily into story games. Like, I played uh, Final Fantasy XIV and I skipped every single cutscene. I tried to invest in the story, but then the first, like, ten quests I stopped caring. I actually really enjoyed the story in this. The storytelling was actually great. I uh, enjoyed the take on Pinocchio from like the different uh, view instead of like it being a Disney story and obviously it's more closer to the original story which was more way more fucked up. The ending, not to spoil anything, the setup they had at the end I thought was actually super hype that that's like a really cool idea I said it in the finale video uh, what I, th I think they should do for that and the environment is another good positive thing about this game I actually really love the environment it feels like gothic, um, Victorian-esque. It, it, it reminds me of Bloodborne. Uh, that's probably why I like it so much, but not even just like this area. Uh, there are other areas. I don't want to like use the Stargazer because I don't want to like show like different uh, areas that people haven't seen, but I'm, I'm trying to stick to like the area from the demo. But yeah, the environment, the just like the maps overall, uh, I thought were amazing. The performance of this game is actually super well done. Like, for example, Elden Ring, day one, that performance was uh, rough. It was like, insanely bad. Uh, this game I had not had a single performance issue with. Uh, another positive of this game was the weapon system, so let me go back to the Stargazer. Uh, in this game, unlike other Souls likes, you can take every weapon and basically make your own weapon with any weapon you have. So you can do like assemble weapons and here you can uh, like if you wanted to make an axe that you put on a rapier handle you could do that uh if you wanted to put a rapier and put it on like a staff you could do that i just thought this system was actually really fucking cool i'm a little disappointed you can't do that with like boss weapons like this katana but man i get it i guess they wanted to make boss weapons seem unique and like strong uh, I also really like the decision making in this game, uh, depending on if you lie or tell the truth. I really like games that actually have decision making processes, like, oh, should I lie here, or should I... Well, it doesn't have to be like lying or telling the truth specifically, but in context of this game, it's like, uh, should I lie here, or should I tell the truth, it, will that affect this or that? Like, the first time I played through this, I was like, oh, uh, I, I don't know what I should do. I hate games that give you the illusion that your decisions matter and then at the end it like nothing really matters. A perfect example of this is the with The Witcher 3. Uh, a lot of decisions in that game like really didn't matter. There was like maybe one or two that actually mattered. <laughs> and for the rest of it, it was like they made it seem like it mattered but it really didn't. Uh, and then 
another positive I like about this game is the areas. Uh, I, I know that kind of ties into environment, but you think it's just going to be in like a Victorian-esque uh, buildings and like structures, but it, there actually is a lot more to it than that that I can't get into without like showing or like spoiling. And I'd rather not do that. So now we come to the cons of this game, or the, the things that I perceive as cons. And I know during my like actual playthrough I was like overly negative or like uh, molding and like, but you need to understand that I really want this game to succeed. I, I actually really enjoy this game, despite like everything. I've, a lot of the stuff I said during the the playthrough was just like being cynical because I that's how I deal with like uh challenge and like impeding progress I guess but I'd say the con to this game the first one I want to talk about is the gameplay loop and by that I mean it gives the illusion of choice that you uh can play this like a souls it's not really like that like you can't use dodging as your main function I, I dislike games that make you essentially play a specific way in order to profit that I think that's a big reason why I didn't like Sekiro was because it only had one method of play style like you could technically yes never deflect in your life in Sekiro but it would take I'd, I'd wager three times as long and then if you uh, just deflected and played like you they wanted you to play. The perfect parry system in this, uh, it, I, I see why it's like satisfying and why they implemented it, but I think the timing for it is way too tight. I actually genuinely believe, uh, for any of you who've played Devil May Cry 5, or not even 5, uh, Devil May Cry like 3 or 4, that the uh, ability to chain 4 uh, judgment cuts from Virgil is actually easier than getting a perfect parry in multiple instances. And what I mean by that is like, you can get perfect parries pretty easily on like a 1 attack, but like if they have a string of attacks that is like 8 attacks in a row, trying to get a perfect parry on all of those I feel like is super hard because of the just like the timing and how bosses are able to essentially delay attacks and then switch up and then not delay attacks I, there's no cadence to the the fights that's something i said a lot in the the playthrough i don't know why this guy's uh weapon is not breaking by the way i found like six perfect parries on this guy There was also, I feel like, a slight delay in, like, blocking. Or, uh, trying to parry. But, somebody said, and I don't know where it was from, I saw it on Reddit, that a reason a lot of people were finding the parry to be super weird is because you're, uh, allegedly, you're supposed to hold the button like this, and then right before you get hit, you're supposed to tap it. And I feel like if I had known that prior to beating the game, I would have, like, had a lot easier time. But, okay, uh, let's see. So we talked about the combat and how I felt the perfect parry system was a little jank. I feel like a lot of these cons I have of this game can be remedied by just like cleaning them up and making them a lot more precise or not precise but like a lot more uh not forgiving but like fair uh another con of this game I felt when I was playing it was the loot you find in game so like when you run through an area and most like souls like You'll find like different stuff like upgrade materials or like, you know, throw by items or like uh, 
I forget what they're called, uh, Bladestone Charms or, like, uh, Bloodstone Charms, like, stuff like that. I felt like a lot of the stuff in this game that you found that weren't in the, the Mason chest were kind of dog shit. Like, it was always just, like... It was always just, like, um... Where the it was either like handles or it was like the ergo uh the star ergo thing or like these like pulled potions that nobody like gives a shit about like I mean I you can use them because they they do help during certain spots but it was always just like stuff that I never really needed or wanted it made it feel like running after like these items or like killing everything in an area to get to one item was just like a waste of time. Uh, another con I felt of this game was, well it's a pro and a con, so the pro of this game is that for weapons they don't really have, so in a lot of souls likes their requirements to wielding a weapon for some reason, so like for example, a weapon like this, like a giant great sword, would need like 20 strength and like maybe like 14 dexterity. Or in this in this game's case, it'd be motivity, 20 motivity and 12 technique in order to wield the weapon. Or if you're playing Dark Souls, it, you could equip the weapon, but you would not be able to get the full damage out of it because you didn't meet the requirements. They don't have that in this game, which I really like, because I hated the fact that, like, I couldn't use a sword because, like, my my magic wasn't high enough or something. It's like, it's a sword, bro. Why do I need... <laughs> I should be able to still use the sword if I, if I want to. So that aspect I thought was really good. But the downside to that is the builds, I feel like, suffer in just a little. Like, I feel like a lot of these concepts in this game are amazing and, like, great, but I feel like they were only thought out halfway. So, what I mean with that is, like, the weapon system is cool. Like, I, I think it's one of the, the best things about this game, if not the best. And I think going forward, I'd actually miss not being able to make my own weapon and, like customize it to my liking like if i wanted a a great sword blade on like a dagger handle i could do that i'm gonna miss that aspect of it but what i won't miss is like the feeling that some weapons and like stuff are just like kind of useless because currently uh I basically just ran this but this and throughout my uh my normal gameplay like the playthrough i did and i just all i did was this was charged attacks because that was like the strongest way to and the fastest way to get uh enemies to stagger uh specific enemies i also had a problem with in this game like the the like clown marionettes the ones that could like throw axes at you and then like pull you in and they, they cause break I thought those were really annoying just because they had like displacement on them and then there were certain other enemies that I thought were really annoying like the uh, the people who were kind of like the the dudes with staves and lanterns from Bloodborne they have like the Pokey staff. Uh, in this game, they like generate electricity with the staff. I thought those guys were way too difficult for just being like a normal enemy, because like they they have other variations of those enemies that use like rapiers and um, a, a couple of different other weapons, and they die within like if I did like two charges like this, they would die in two of those. But the guys who have the electric staff, they would take like. 12 of these uh, charge or twos to die, and I wasn't sure why. Why the... 
the guys with the electric staff were that tanky. So let's see. Uh, another, I guess you could say pro slash con is the grindstone. Now, I'm no, like, it's not my first radio with, like, weapons that uh, you need to sharpen, because I, I play a lot of Monster Hunter, but in this game I feel like the durability could use a little more, like, numeric value. So, what I mean by that is, say for example, the so the bar above my weapons in the bottom right, the white bar, that is my durability. So, imagine if the durability, I don't know what the actual number is, but like the numeric value, let's just say for example, the numeric value was 20. And each hit you did, each normal hit you did, minus one durability. But each charge hit you did, minus three. So the problem with the durability then becomes that if you're doing too many hits, uh, you will get to the point where sharpen you're sharpening a lot more depending on what's going on. And that becomes really annoying in certain specific scenarios like if you have say like a, a mob of like six enemies trying to kill you and you attack them and suddenly you hit like all six at once or whatever if that counts the durability as one per enemy then you're already at like minus six so you're already a decent chunk of durability down and I also think it was kind of annoying during certain boss fights because I don't I don't know if certain boss fights were like tougher on du durability or not, but there were certain fights where like the Stargazer was right outside the boss fight room and I would go in, I would do like, I don't know, like three or four charged R2s with this. And then I would have to immediately go and sharpen. And I was like, what? I was like, why is this weapon so like weak already? So I thought, like, it, like I don't mind doing the durability thing, because it makes sense, like, if you use a weapon enough. That's why I didn't have a problem with Monster Hunter. Like, Monster Hunter is fine, because, like, if you use the weapon enough, like, you're going to have to resharpen it. That's just how it works. But in this game, I, I just felt like they got too dull too fast, so maybe just add a little more durability so, like, they could withstand slightly more. Because the the worst thing, and it was very evident when I was doing the second to last boss fight, the the Thunder Lady. That's all I'm gonna say. I'm not gonna say the name or anything, but that for people who know, they know. I felt in that fight. I don't know if it was just because I was attacking and I kept bouncing off her shield or whatever, or if it was her armor or whatever. But I felt like that fight specifically, my durability was just getting shredded. Because, like, every time I made it to phase 2, I, I noticed I'd basically have to sharpen it if I wanted to continue the fight immediately. And you can't because she does a specific attack that you need to be paying attention for. Uh, let's see, what else? I guess we can talk about bosses. Uh, again, bosses are pros and cons. There are some bosses I did not like absolutely, and then there are other bosses where I thought they were fine. But I feel like that's common with any like souls like that have uh, an emphasis on boss fights. Another thing is the uh, one second I. I had it in my my mind, and then I, I said what I said about bosses, and I completely forgot what I was, I was going to say. <laughs> oh, the uh, this isn't what I was going to say, but the music in this game is actually really good. I, I didn't really hear a lot of it when I was playing through normally, just because, like, depending on where I was, I was, like, either molding or paying attention to, like, the environment or, like, trying not to die. But yeah, uh, the music in this game is actually really good. It's not like your traditional 
from soft music where it's like an orchestra or whatever. It's it's kind of more like a opera or lyrical music. I would go to the hotel to show you guys some music, but the hotel there uh, because I'm basically at the end of the game with the option to go into New Game Plus, the hotel is actually changed, so I don't want to ruin that for people. <laughs> uh, what else? The quest lines I thought were nice. I especially like that when you are doing a quest line and you can progress a quest line, the teleport menu will tell you where to go for that quest line. It'll like mark where you can go to continue something. That's a nice touch. Uh, other than that, it, unless I remember what I was trying to think of earlier, that's pretty much the review. I was, I was trying to see if it would come back to me when I was like running around here. Uh, it didn't really, so... I'm not sure what it was. It was like something... I, I was talking about bosses and how... Oh, I know what it was. Uh, in this game I feel like... They kind of want you to use the specters, because as far as I could tell... Summoning a specter for a boss didn't really have any negative connotation. So normally when you summon in like a FromSoft game, bosses will get, I think it's like 20 or 30% uh, more HP because you summon someone. In this game, it didn't really feel like they actually penalized you for that. Uh, I don't know how it worked in Elden Ring though. I'm not sure if using the like spectral summons actually counted or if it didn't, but. In this game, it didn't feel like there was a penalty to the summoning. And I feel like summoning during certain bosses, like... Uh, well, they were in the trailer, but the, the people who carry the coffin that say liar in it, I won't say the name, but if you saw the trailer, you'll know what I'm talking about. That fight, I feel like it was kind of needed, just because there were so many... Obviously, you can do it all solo, like, uh, there, there is no need, but like, I feel like it was kind of, like, drastically easier, obviously, if, if you summon. And the, the other thing with the summons is that, like, you might be like, oh yeah, it makes it easier, or whatever, like, I'm not doing that, but, like, the, the specters themselves aren't the greatest AI. Like, I had plenty of times where I was... Because I stopped caring about doing everything solo. Like, I didn't some stuff solo when I could. And towards the end, when bosses hit harder, uh, Spectres would die a lot more often, and then I would have to solo the rest of the fight. But the Spectre AI is actually kind of bad. There were plenty of times where, in, like, in certain bosses, the boss would do like an area of effect or something, and the Spectre wouldn't try to avoid it. They just kind of like walked into it and then like took... like obscene amount of damage and then died so it's like they weren't really like playing like a player would which uh i don't know how like how hard that is to code but like i feel like in FromSoft, uh they're able to nail having ai not be like stupid pretty well but yeah uh, I'll give this game a rating, I guess, uh, out of 100, just because I think 1 to 10 is too small. Uh, so de despite all the cynical stuff I said and like how I was perceived during my, my first playthrough in the, the playlist, I actually really like this game. I want this game to succeed, which is why it upsets me when this game is uh, w not functioning the best.
Oh, another quick thing is I, I think there was like a delay in like certain actions, which I guess we chalked that up to con. Because there were multiple times, and it, you can see in the playthrough too, where I'd be like mashing circle or to dodge or something, or like trying to like parry. And those inputs just weren't coming out. That leads me into another thing that I want to quickly mention, and it's the... I There needs to be poise on just something. Make it on the uh, Fable Arts if you want, because like... Okay, hold on. We're going to go down this rabbit hole of me remembering stuff I wanted to talk about. So before I do the, the final score... Fable Arts, I think, were cool and, and nice, but I literally never, never wanted to use them because there was no poise on them there was no there was no guarantee that you would get them off and uh, i understand that there could be like a, a high risk high reward kind of thing but there was never any reward for using them it was only a risk because you would use like for example since i have a full bar uh you would use a weapon like if i was using this and i wanted to use this look at the wind up on that that's way too long that that would get interrupted ten times over by any enemy. And like even this, like this is like Yeah, it's fast. If anything, I feel like the Fable Arts on faster weapons like uh this katana and like the lighter weapons, so not not heavy weapons like that, but like the clockwork sword or whatever, like weapons that are smaller and quicker. The Fable Arts are a lot better, but because for the primary of this game I used uh, the saw, bone saw blade with the, uh, I think it was the puppet handle or something, I felt the Fable Arts were kind of trash, and there was no, no good time to use them ever. Like, even when the, the bosses or whatever enemies would be, like, staggered, if I use the Fable Art, they would take too long, especially if I burn three bars. That by the time I got out of the Fable Art, the boss would not be staggered anymore. And that's with the extra stagger duration from the Quartz. Uh, we can quickly talk about the Quartz too, because I mentioned it. And I, I, did, I should just talk about it for a little bit. Uh, it's a nice system. Uh, it does lock away some stuff that I think should be not locked away, like the ability to roll after being flattened out by like an enemy, I don't think that should be locked away. The the multi-dodge one I think is fine because like that's that you can make an argument that makes sense. But like if you're being attacked on the floor, just like just feeling helpless, that's that's uh that's not fun. That's not a fun experience. <laughs> uh another thing in this game I felt and this ties back into weapons. I I don't know how long this video is going to be by the way. I I'm just kind of this is why I usually write scripts for these videos so that I can like get everything out on paper and then read it so then this video doesn't just turn into me like remembering shit and then like adding it on. But this ties into weapons. I, I genuinely think that strength based weapons, so like the giant swords like like this. This is a giant great sword. Look how slow that is. The, so usually the trade-off is strength weapons will do a lot of damage, but will take very long animations to deal with that damage. I genuinely think strength weapons are a waste of time in this game. Because a lot of the enemies move so fast and are f quick and like speedy, I think quicker weapons like... Like, this is still not as quick as, like, you, I'm trying to get at, but this is better than the, the giant sword I was just using. But, like, a weapon like 
this, which is like the katana, which is lightweight, and like you can like swing and like move. Like look how look how fast this is compared to the the great sword I was just using. I think quicker weapons actually benefit more just because everything in this game is so quick. Uh, and using strength-based weapons, uh, you definitely will struggle. As somebody who used primarily a strength-based weapon in this game, or sorry, a motivity-based weapon. It doesn't say motivity here because I set the scaling to be technique, but usually this is a motivity-based weapon. Like a weapon like this, where you, like all I was doing was charge attacks because that was the most effective way. Uh, you get interrupted a lot, and because there's no poise and there's no like hyper armor or whatever else you want to call it, uh, it will interrupt the gameplay loop and the uh, feel of like good gameplay. Now I understand that like uh, you can get interrupted in other games and stuff, but at least in those other games, you do have that option of like certain things being poise and the hyper armor. In this game, there's no no such thing as hyper armor. You just get staggered to death by anything it could be the most basic enemy and you would get staggered and die like against bosses it's fine like i i understand that bosses are stronger and they they will not care about like your attacks more but it was just like every single random enemy would stagger you and basically stun lock you to death So I think if they change that and like a couple of the other things I mentioned earlier, this game would be instantly improved a lot, a lot better. But yeah, uh, so that turns into towards the end of the game, I actually stopped trying to kill. So normally how I play these games is that I get to an area, so say like I, I just rested here, I try to kill everything at least once. And then after I killed everything at least once. If I die or if I make it back to a thing, I'll, I'll reset and then I'll just run through and not care. Towards the end of the game, because some of the enemies were really annoying where they had really fast attacks and they could just stun lock you to death, I just stopped trying to kill everything. Because it, it the, the reward was not worth the risk of dying. Like yeah, I could potentially get an item from them, but... I could also potentially lose the, like, 700 ergo I had. And, uh, I guess that'll bring us to the, the scoring again. And hopefully this time I don't go on a tangent and, uh... Er, okay, hold on, we're gonna talk about one more thing and then we'll go to the scoring. <laughs> This is, this is why I write scripts for these videos, and I don't just wing it with, like, bullet points. Uh, the Legion Arms. Legion Arms are cool. Uh, I didn't really use them heavily. So you have quite a bit. And these were all showcased in the, uh, the video that came out before the game came out, so I don't mind showing these, but... You have all these different kinds of legion arms, uh, they all do different things, like, this is one of the earlier ones you get, it's the scorpion get over here legion arm. And then you have, uh, another one that's like flame, you saw me use this earlier. And then you have... The acid one, and the electricity one. Which, this one is just like... It puts a puddle of like AOE on the floor, and if you stand, if they stand in, in this, uh, they'll take tick damage. Like he's poisoned now, so he's gonna die. And then you have the electric one. And then there's uh, other cool ones, or not as cool ones, like there's a shield one, and then there's a, a mine one, and then there's a, a gun. 
But typically I just use the, the scorpion get over here and the flying one. Uh, the only thing I, uh, the downside to the legion arms is that they don't really, well, some of them don't work on bosses. Like this, uh, scorpion get over here one doesn't really work on bosses because you can't pull them towards you. Unless they're like a stalker enemy, because those are just like human types enemies, but. Against like the bigger robots, like you can't really, until you upgrade it, you can't really do anything. Like on this, you can do this and then like do that and then pull in and then. Like, that looked cool as fuck, but you had to upgrade your arm, I think, to the max in order to do that. So, like, you can't really do that on bosses until you're more than halfway through the game. There was something else I thought of when I was in that explanation of... Legion Arms, and I cannot remember what it was. I was like gonna throw that in right before we got to the scoring again. Oh, uh, I guess we can talk about this cube too. This cube, I think, takes way too long to activate. So I found I found myself never using it. Or when I did, it was like a pain in the ass to use. And I would only do it when I knew I was like safe for certain, for sure. It was usually during a transition for a boss or like when they were doing a long wind up attack that took a long time. Or the boss was stuck in an animation, I would do it. But yeah. Okay, so let's just end the video here so then I don't go on and on and on. Uh, scoring. I think this game has a lot going for it. I think if they just keep putting in effort to make the overall gameplay and loop of this game feel better, uh, this game could easily... Uh, it'll easily surpass Souls games for me, but not necessarily Bloodborne. I'm not a as big as a fan of I of Souls games as I am Bloodborne. So this could easily fit its way into my second favorite of this like genre with Bloodborne being the first. But until they do, I don't know if they will, but until this game feels smoother to play, because like right now it just feels jank in certain aspects, like of, of like what I was saying, like when dodging it like would eat inputs and then like trying to parry it would eat inputs. If they iron that stuff out, this could a thousand percent be better than the Souls games. And I would like to see where this goes, because uh, I'm not going to say what happens at the end, but after you beat the game, there's a cutscene that alludes to something else. And I thought that was actually a very cool idea and concept. So I actually want to see this play out. But I'm going to knock this game down from so initially so say that the game works the way i want it to where like it doesn't have it removes a lot of the jankiness and the loop of the gameplay isn't like incredibly fucked if you're being staggered to death i would have given this game probably a 96 but because this game feels as jank as it does in the times it does, and they're usually crucial times because that's the only time it'll it'll act up during like boss fights or whatever, this game is only gonna get a seventy six from me because I I think it says a lot about a game where my first playthrough towards the end because the jankiness was just constantly having during the last two bosses 
I just wanted to finish the game as fast as possible so I could stop playing. And I did that by cheesing the fuck out of the last two bosses. But it took me so long that I didn't even feel like excited about killing them. I even messed recording the, the killing of the last two bosses because I didn't know how long it was going to take and I didn't want to have a six hour recording of just like me failing to uh, kill a boss and dying over, like basically ramming my head against the wall against the boss that I wasn't able to kill so I cheesed the fuck out of it and I missed the recording of the last two. Just because I was so like mentally defeated and drained that like and that that's never happened to me before. Like I've I've played through all the other I've beaten I've a hundred percent Bloodborne, I've beaten all of Dark Souls three multiple times, I've beaten Elden Ring, I, I actually hundred percent of that for some godforsaken reason. I hundred percent of Neo one, I hundred percent of Neo two, I beat Sekiro. Even though I didn't enjoy Sakura, I beat Demon Souls. I played the Surge. I, I I don't think I beat the Surge. I, I just remember playing it. I played some of Lord of the Fallen. I didn't play Mortal Shell, but I'm. I'd like to say I'm well versed in these types of games of like Souls likes. And I'll echo what a lot of people have said about this game. This is easily the best Souls like that's come out that wasn't a From Software game. Which is shocking because uh, supposedly what I learned is that this game is a, is made by a, only a double A studio, and so it's not a triple A game, as far as I know. But this, this game has the potential to take that company and propel them to success. As long as they fix up the janky, because like me and a lot of other people who play these genre of games will notice when the game is clunky or janky or whatever and like you could say yeah it's like skill issue or whatever like that's literally all i ever see online when people post one thing and like they criticize one thing about something but have said 90 positive things people are just like oh skill issue or whatever like get good or whatever do this like that that's just the from Soft community in general those that's the worst part of that community that like they just want to suck their own dick there's a difference between criticizing just to criticize and then criticizing because you want this game to to succeed and do better I would wager I'm part of the second half of that because I do like this game despite everything that happened during the first playthrough of all like the mulling, the cynical like shit I said, whatever. I genuinely do like this game. I do want it to succeed because I want to see a franchise from this game. But until they fix the like clunkiness slash jankiness slash like, weird button random inputs not being inputted and, like, the eating of inputs. That caused a lot of deaths for no reason when I was playing this. I can't give it anything higher than a 76 in good conscience. Like, the parry timing is whatever, like, I, during the playthrough you'll see me hit a lot of, like, perfect parries and, like, it wasn't that bad, but... It's just that, like, there were times where I should have a thousand percent hit some, but, like, for some reason, I don't know if it was because I got hit or, like, I was staggered or whatever, that my inputs were just not working, that I died multiple times. I died maybe 50 plus just to that alone, where buttons weren't being registered and me pressing them, and that would lead me to die. And to me, that's just, like, an unfair result of like I, I don't know what causes that i don't know if it like happens because i'm using a controller or if like if i started using like keyboard and mouse if it would actually not have input lag or delay or whatever it's called but yeah this game uh to throw a yu-gi-oh reference 
this game would be like the equivalent of Red Eyes Black Dragon. It represents pot potential. This game has tons of potential. But it, till it reaches that potential, it's a 76 for me. If they eventually do fix it and to the point where it feels smoother and it feels nice to play and everything else like I mentioned before, it will go back up to a 96. Because I, I generally think this is one of the better games that's come out for this genre. I think a lot of other games that come out for this genre are forgettable or like wa too watered down with like bullshit nobody cares about. Like I, I, I think uh, The Surge is a perfect example of that. It tried a different take on the formula and just like no, nobody's talking about The Surge this late. Like, nobody's talking about how, oh, the Surge is this and this, like, they did this. Versus a game like Bloodborne, like, that game came out in 2015, and it was about to be the 10-year anniversary in, like, two years, and people were still talking about that game. So, I think impact overall, like, this game can have a big impact, and has a lot of potential to have a big impact, and you know, be successful, but they just have to iron out some of those, like, weird clunkiness of the game. But, yeah, that's the, uh, that's the review. God damn, I made this 46 minutes? That's what happens when you don't make a script. Always make a script. Don't, don't just wing it. But, yeah, anyway, uh, that'll do it.